Shivambu, as the name suggests, is a, is a Sanskrit name. So for most of you, you will not know what it is about. So let me start by explaining Shivambu is about using urine as a therapy. And it is a science in itself. So let us look at what we have to tell you about Shivambu. So as part of the Shivambu series, we'll be educating you about what is ancient wisdom, the, how Shivambu is a powerful tool for health, the methodology of using Shivambu, the prescription of Shivambu and how it should be used beneficially, how it works within the body and its preventive and curative properties. For those of you who don't know, Bharat has always had a heritage of superior healthcare system from curative to preventive all along. We have had incredible medical and surgical brilliance for ages. Ayurved, Siddha and other tribal medicines had a powerful curative nature. These had developed to the extent that every household kitchen had its own spice box of homebound useful and effective medicines. So a spice box becomes an essential tool in an Indian's household. Every housewife had basic education about emergency medicine, herbs and foods to use according to season and some general uses of the spice box. There was a custom which is followed even today that every new bride should be gifted a spice box as it was an essential tool for the family in terms of cooking, health giving and emergencies. Similarly, surgery had reached its zenith with plastic surgery being a routine operation. Nose Reconstruction was a common affair. The instruments and techniques of that era are still considered for use today. As part of our ancient wisdom, most people will be aware that we have given the word yoga, dhyan, which is meditation, vyayam, which is exercise, and martial arts in terms of Kalari Patu, Krishni, and possibly the founder Bodhi. Bodhidharma was the founder of Shaolin uh, monks and Shaolin uh, martial arts. So again, that hails from India. And these were some of the preventive strategies to encompass better health and good fitness. Shivambu was supposed to be for preventive health and for higher purposes, that is healing, developing higher abilities of strength and other abilities including support for meditation development. So it was supposed to be a tool to enlighten your body, to purify your body and make it easier to access into the meditative levels or phases. So what is Shivambu? Shivambu is about using urine for medicinal purposes, whether it's external use or internal use. The earliest treatise, which is one of the most complete treatises even today, is the Shivambu Kalpavidhi, which is a chapter in the Dhamma Tantra. All other current literature is very much piecemeal. Besides, a lot of Ayurveda and other texts claim authority over Shivambu and its working. But their references in Ayurvedic tests are not adequate for a complete study of the subject and we still fall back on Shivambu Kalpavidhi as the original source and complete data on Shivambu knowledge. So what is Shivambu Kalpavidhi about? It's a very powerful tool. Shivambu is a very powerful tool. Shivambu Kalpavidhi is about 107 shlokas. Shlokas is like uh, stanzas or paragraphs which is the Hindu, uh, Indian or Bharatiya version of description of literature. And this was a dialogue between Lord Shiva to Devi Parvati, where he reveals this knowledge. He shared this knowledge with his consort, Devi Parvati. These 107 shlokas can be broken down into section details. The sections I have broken down into is how to use Shivambu, Benefits of Shivambu, Recipes for Special Purposes, Medicinal Herb Mixtures, Rules for External Use, and last but not the least, it was advised to keep this a secret. That is the last shloka. 
My assumption after nearly 30 years of practice and prescription is that secrecy may have been advised to ensure some comfort in society and no ostracization due to the lack of understanding of this subject. I personally have experienced this whenever I have tried to pass on this knowledge to others that uh, this chap is a madman, he drinks his urine, what rubbish is talking about, let us not keep in touch with him, let us keep away from him, etc, etc. But I am gone past all that and my desire is not to keep it a secret, is not because I want to proliferate it, I want people who are sick to benefit from it and we will talk a bit more about that. Why do we call this a powerful tool? For the past 30 years, the effectiveness in complex, incurable and so-called impossible cases which showed incredible cures. People term these cures miraculous, but I don't think so. I think they are just possible simply because the modality has got effectiveness and it has a great healing property. I just feel that people are ignorant of the potential and just jump, hence jump to the conclusion that it is miracles. So let me look at some of the classic cases that we have benefited just to show, throw some limelight on this area. We will talk about two or three skin problem patients. I had two adults and a child with skin problems come to me. The two adults, one of them was having eczema and the eczema skin was so thick as leather as if I was to put a leather patch on the skin in those parts on the elbows, on the knees, etc. on the ankles, it would look like, the skin would look like that. It was so rough, so tough, so dry. The other person had skin ulcers and boils and they would break down every now and then. And the child had Irritable eczema, which was of unknown cause, idiopathic as they called it in Western medicine. But so much so that at night when the itching was bad enough, that the child would scratch so much so even though if we had trimmed the nails properly, the child could bleed at times in her sleep. All these cases were treated with shivambu, external and internal use. And lo behold, the child improved within a few weeks or rather within a few days and eventually after a few months of ingestion of Shivambu, child was completely cured and she didn't need to go back to it. The other two because they were much more chronic cases, it took them nearly about a year to year and a half to change completely and today both of them are living healthy lives without any problems with perfectly normal skin totally healthy skin, no scars visible, not a single scar. That is the uniqueness that I really surprised me as a health practitioner as well, that how can such a terrible looking skin become normal without a single scar, but it did happen and I have seen them. Talking about preventive health, I have said two cases, I will just give you one case. Recently we had a young lady who was supposedly in fairly normal health but she had a period where she had some problems. She used to get pain at period time, slight mood changes, feel off, sometimes may have clots etc etc. But she didn't think much about it. She thought it was normal to have periods like that. So she continued that. After Shivambu practiced for a few months and along with that she was doing Surya Namaskar as well. So I can't just say it was definitely due to Shivambu. But she was doing Surya Namaskar before also. So which is why she linked it more to Shivambu practice. And within about four to six months she noticed one fine day she came in and said, you know my periods now are silky smooth. Not a single problem. No cramps, no mood changes, nothing. I didn't even know I was going to have periods. I was aware, but it was so smooth that I couldn't believe it. And for the last two, three months now, she has been having smooth periods with no problems and she can't believe it to what level health can be. For me, it was a big learning curve that a woman can have periods without absolutely no pain. And I used to believe it, but I had never seen a case to that extent. And today I can confidently say that if anybody any woman who is having any form of dysfunction with her periods can completely be changed. Shivambu may not be the necessary prescription, but through acupuncture and Shivambu, I have healed a lot of women 
and improve their quality of life. And I'm sure this can happen. Now here is a case history that I'm going to share. This is a recording of a lady. I will just share it because it is in Marathi. Hello, I am a Madhyamvain Gruhini. I am a Kuparsha person. Surai Sista, Gas Sista, Vagari Tras Hotota. Pono Mikup Sara Therapies Trikelia. Homeopathy, Allopathy, Ayurvedic. पण तरी मला आराम पडू शकला नाही नंतर मात्र डॉक्टर आनंद बापट यांच्या सांगण्यानुसार मी शिवांबू ट्राय केली आणि त्याचा मला खूपच उपयोग झाला मला खूप खास सुटायची जखमा व्हायच्या गोलगोल स्वरूपाच्या तर त्या खूपच कमी झाल्या खाजही कमी झाली मी डॉक्टर आनंद बापट यांना खूप धन्यवाद देते त्यांना मी श्वासाचे त्यांनी मला टेक्निक्स शिकवले त्याचाही मला खूप उपयोग झाला धन्यवाद सो शिवांबू चेंज इट with breathing exercise and Shivambu, she is now getting nearly normal. I won't say she is 100% normal as yet, but over the next six months to a year, I hope that she will be able to get rid of Shivambu if she doesn't wish to. One of the problems that happens with people who have started taking Shivambu and are getting beneficial results, they say, look, it's not bothering me. I get up in the morning, I drink it. Nobody needs to know. I'm happy. I'm having a wonderful time. I'm feeling full of energy and full of beans. Why should I leave it? So a lot of them will continue to do that irrespective of their cures. So what is the methodology? How does this Shivambu process work? It is incredible how there are varied prescriptions by different people. Some will say take a drop, some will take, say drop the milk first one third and last one third because some books say it etc etc. But I find, unfortunately, not many people have studied it in detail and used it objectively to cure people and then share their experience. Today, I find that not a single case so far has been non-responsive. They may not be fully cured, but that is because they are still part of the process into the curative stage. But they definitely have seen change. I have observed that it is essential to have a proper follow-up over long periods with such people. Because people tend to go, oh, I'm feeling better now, so I'll stop it. And then they wonder why things went backwards. Now, the simple prescriptions for Shivambu are, if you wish to do so, you're welcome to join and benefit from it. Drinking all the urine you pass every morning, anytime after 3 a.m. So if you wake up at 1.30, 2 o'clock, 2.30 to go to the toilet, you let it go. If you wake up anytime after 3 o'clock, you collect it in a glass or steel container and drink up the whole lot immediately. As in within, you collect it and drink it. There are various fasts for specific purposes. So here now we are talking about different prescriptions for different scenarios. External use of Shivambu requires a minimum of 8 weeks of age urine. I have got urine collected which is one year, two year, five years old and I find it incredibly powerful. The age, more age the urine, the more chronic the problem, the more severe the problem, it has fantastic effect. If it is not possible to age urine because time is of essence, then you can boil fresh urine but you have to boil to a quarter of the volume of urine and then it's ready for external use. Only then it is ready for external use. How does it work? It has a laxative and nutritive effect on body. It cleanses the gut completely as best as it can. Don't be surprised if you start taking Shivambu and you get the runs. But the runs will not be like diarrhea. It will be like I need to go, I need to go. But you can hold on for a few minutes or a bit longer if you have to. When you don't go, it can be like a tap has been turned on and you're flushed clean the whole gut. But it will not be repetitive. 
the other thing with diarrhea when you have a tummy upset and when you have diarrhea you feel weak you feel tired you feel lethargic and you feel lack of energy with a shivambu flush as soon as the flush is gone you will feel like ooh feels better the other classic correlation i can give you is if you have been drinking and we feel like vomiting when you throw up you feel better generally unless you have drunk so much that the throwing up itself is a problem okay now it cleanses the gut and most ancient remedies ayurveda siddha acupuncture etc talk about keeping the gut clean anyway now the nutrition that is provided through urine is what i call fast food why do i say that when you look at urine you will find that when you compare urine to blood all the ingredients in the urine are identical to all the ingredients in the blood the only difference is the blood has got ingredients of a different quantity and the urine will have ingredients which are excess in the blood at that point in time i'll repeat it the urine will have ingredients which are excessive in the blood at that point in time but it is not a hamburger or a cheesecake or a milk drink that is in the blood or the urine those have been broken down into their core elements of sodium potassium magnesium zinc etc etc and that is in the blood and that same quantity the same elements are in the urine so now i ask you when i say it is fast food if you drink your urine you are providing your body with all the nutrient nutrients immediately your body does not have to break down the food to create those nutrients and hence they are absorbed directly into the blood and that is why it is called fast food according to me similarly if you have eaten excessively salty or excessively sweet food there is a possibility that your urine will be salty or sweet remember body does not have to digest the food when you have urine in your body they have got all the absorbed material that is formed in the blood and this hence this can be absorbed directly into the body when people go on a fast on urine so you drink urine only and nothing else urine and water it is potentially very powerful in detoxifying the whole body and providing nutrition as well preventive and curative properties examples have provided details about possibilities preventive health examples were shown which we talked about but ended up benefiting and changing the ideology of normality so for me today the idea of normality of a normal period has shifted drastically similarly for me today idea of normality of suffering and change to normal has shifted drastically if anybody comes to me with any suffering unless it is a bony deformity or something like that everything is reversible the body is phenomenally capable of returning to normality if it gets the right environment and the direction i and others who are regular practitioners for the past many years over 20 plus years have found the following experiences i have not suffered from any illness as such to talk about generally i have been quite healthy the reason my health has shifted in any way will be mainly because i have gone overboard because i take shivambu there is no laxity for me to have late nights lack of sleep over exert over exhaust over eat if i do all that surely i'm going to have its repercussions in terms of negative effects the only thing that will not happen is the intensity of the damage may not be as much as it would be for somebody else without shivambu so basically external food or drink doesn't bother me some people have noticed that mosquitoes will not sit on your skin and bite you they will sit on the skin and march around they don't have the guts to bite you now people laugh and say if they bite you the mosquito will die maybe that is true and maybe the mosquito knows that better most people who practice shivambu as a routine for more than 5 or 10 years appear younger in their chrono- chronological age just last week a gentleman where i live who's close to my age or a bit older i think asked me how old are you i said look have a guess he said oh are you over 50 i said go up he said are you over 60 i said go up when i eventually confirmed that i am over 66 now he just like had wide eyes and looked at me in amazement and said oh i'm amazed i'm surprised so we do look younger about 7 8 years ago 
when I was in my mid to late 50s, one of my colleagues with whom I used to work for years happened to talk to me and I said, how old are you? I said, guess. And she gave me a 47 figure. That time I was, she dropped me by about 10, 12 years. And I said, no. And she said, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You have got children as old as us. So you must be older. So you must be this age. I said, hey, that is wrong. You are supposed to judge my age looking at me. She said, yeah, looking at you, you are so active, you are so energetic, you are full of beans, you join with us. To us, you feel like you are in your 40s. I said, thank you, boss. Very nice. Some of them are much more fitter and capable for their age. And some have actually competed with younger people on a par with them. So finally, to sum up. We have given you the knowledge and the information about Shivambu or urine therapy, what it is, how it is effective, what miraculous conditions it can overcome, how it is a curative and a preventive strategy. Now this knowledge is there for you to decide whether you wish to use it. If you wish to use it, doing it regularly will change you and you might find that your Shivambu practice will start taking you on a different level of better health. Once you come to that different level of better health, don't be surprised that you start changing a lot faster. And if you're doing it for about 100 odd days, then you'll have become used to it. And then doing it consistently, you will be on the path to better health. At this stage, I would like to say goodbye and I'll meet you in the next episode of Freedom from Disease. Namaskar. bit about me. I practice from Pune. I've got an acupuncture natural therapy clinic. I teach Surya Namaskar. It takes us eight hours over eight weeks to teach Surya Namaskar properly. We have 70 plus levels of difficulty. We are in the process of bringing science to naturopathy. I'm a Shivambu practitioner and an expert at it. So I propagate that a lot. We are offering a free internet clinic for the last four or five years where people can contact me on email and I try to connect with them and give them advice that can help them in their health. Presently, that's going worldwide and a lot of people are benefiting. At least that's what they tell me. And now we are looking at this series on health where we are propagating freedom from disease and we are coming to you with different topics every week. We are halfway there and we are getting a good response. And this goes on for another couple of months so we expect that all of you would like to listen, understand, bring it into your life, bring change to your life, and hopefully head towards becoming freer from disease. On this note, let me say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, and I'll catch up with you next Thank week. Thank you, Anand Bapat, for your valuable information on health. This series is a 15 to 22 part series on developing oneself into a healthy person. This series will educate, guide and provide support through our online educational and support services to enhance your health. All queries are welcome on the following email. Download app Health Siren for all health solutions at your doorstep.